The Inspiris Resilia Aortic Valve is a three-leaflet valve which has been designed to be resilient. And do you know what? It's made from cow heart tissue. So, uh, we see the shadow of the heart here and then we see the heart being, being going to be open. It's going to be behind it. And then when you open the heart, that's the valve sitting here like that. This is a disease valve. The normal valve looks thinner than this. This looks thicker. So it's thickened. So it's a disease valve. Especially in the environment here, it's actually due to rheumatic heart disease. So this whole valve, with the natural valve, is going to be removed. And when you remove the valve, you have to replace it. And when disease affect these valves, what are the options for us in dealing with them? That will be the challenge for cardiac surgeons for all these years. And therefore, it has been a headache for us how do we get a material or an artificial valve that can stay or that can be more durable? That'd be the challenge. Currently in cardiac surgery, we have two main types of valves or artificial valves that can be used to replace a damaged valve in the heart. One is a metal, we call it a mechanical valve. The other one is a tissue valve or an animal valve which are gotten from the valves, gotten from animals like cows and uh, pigs and the rest. What we have rise, uh, realized in the world is that the mechanical valves, if you replace a damaged or a diseased valve with a mechanical valve, because the mechanical valve is a matter, it can lead to complications like clotting and then bleeding. Though a metallic valve or a mechanical valve can stay for long. The other valve which is better in terms of less complication is what we call a tissue valve which actually obtained from the valves or the covering of valves of cows which, uh, or pigs we call the posan valves or the bovine valves but the issue is that if you replace a disease valve in a human being with the tissue valves which are obtained or manufactured from animals like cows and pigs as i said they deteriorate or they get destroyed very early, especially in young people and in Africans. That's what I've been realized. You know, in Africa, we have a young population. You know, most of our patients here are in their 40s and they so in their 30s. And therefore, if you put these tissue valves, which are the animal valves, we, we put them or implant them in young people in Africans, it's realized that they deteriorate very, very fast because what they call castle deposition in the valves, the valve get destroyed. So it's been a headache for the whole world how you can get a valve that can stay for long especially in africans and also especially in young people and research has gone on and has taken 12 years of research in the u.s for them to come up to develop a valve now which is a tissue valve not a metallic valve that is implanted in young people and that can also be implanted in africans that can stay longer this valve is called resilient valve was actually it took two years for it to develop that valve in the US. It got FDA approval in 2017 and the first implant started in 2019. We were fortunate in Kumasi in Ghana and Africa to have the opportunity to have a donation for the electronics from uh, uh, the US who donated one of these valves to us. In fact, the price of it is right now is almost nine thousand dollars for that valve. They did, they did it for us to try to implant it in Africa. In 2019, well, fortunately, we had some uh, partners from the UK who came and they did one to us and I implanted that valve in, in a young, in a elderly woman, an elderly man who was 57 years old with a very bad disease, aortic valve. About car valve, and we use the TG valve here because it's a special one that can stay for long. And the patient need not be on the blood thinner drug, which is the warfarin. That's the own complications. That the major advantage of it is that that particular valve that we implanted, the patient need not be on the blood thinner drug called warfarin. And we implanted it and it went so well and we have been following this man for the past three years he's doing so well so we realized that okay then we are fortunate to have been the first 
people in Africa to have implanted this special valve. And we said to just talk about it. And we have actually gone ahead to publish an experience of the first plantation of this resilient valve in Africa. So